How we doing, everybody? Great. Thank you, Coach. Uh, if you want to just have some opening remarks, and then we'll go to questions. Um, man, what a what a great opportunity for our guys, and a great showing of their toughness, resilience, and just how much they care and love each other. You know, I think you saw their heart out there on the court to each other. Um, we didn't play very well in the first half at all. To only be down eight was really good for us. Um, we talked at halftime about doing our jobs and the mistakes we were making that put us in our predicament in the second half. And we only caused three turnovers in the first half. We averaged 14 for a, a game. And so uh, we just, it was, we weren't playing with enough um, aggression on either end. And I thought our guys did an unbelievable job in the second half. And, you know, their big three had 32 of their 41 points um, at halftime. And I think they only scored eight points in the second half. And as a team, they only scored 18. So uh, just so proud of our guys and so thankful for this opportunity to serve and love them. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, Coach, what was kind of the rallying cry to start getting some stops and get the defense going and to stop uh, KJ Williams? Um, I don't know if there was a rallying cry. But we felt that the person who was able to deliver the passes to KJ, um, he, he's a non-shooter. That was zero for me. And so we were really athletic kids, so we weren't pressuring him because we were concerned about his drive and ability. But by not pressuring him, it allowed him to have time to see to throw the ball into KJ. So in the second half, we just decided we were going to pressure and make it really. And if they drove, they drove. Um, so I thought that was a good adjustment by the staff. And um, and then the guys, the guys just, you know, locked in and decided they were going to fly around and, and won a little bit more. And, you know, our, our, you know, we always say the toughest team wins. And I thought we were the toughest team in the second half. How much confidence does it give you that you guys made the plays, made the consistent plays down the stretch in order to win? Yeah, you know, it's a two-way street, right? Uh, you know, I'm gaining confidence in them and, and they're gaining confidence in us as a staff. I mean, we're all new. And so their belief in the adjustments we're making and what we're calling, you know, just, just um, you know, and us growing and learning them and, and how to put them in the best situations for them to be successful. So it's a two-way street. I appreciate that, Coach. Thanks. No Congrats. Problem. Thanks, Michael. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Uh, next question to Tim. Hey, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you, Tim. Um, that that very last shot, the the Keontae shot, obviously it, it, it's a clutch shot. But but how much more clutch was was Desi's pass to him to not not lose it out of bounds to get it to him in time to make it before the shot clock ran out? Yeah, you know um, the interesting thing about it is that there was a backside action on that. We actually wanted Keontae on the right side of the court to drive it, and he lost it. But we had a backside action that Desi followed through with. Had Desi not followed through with the backside action, he would not have been there to get the ball to then make the heady play of throwing it back to him. So, you know, it's just everybody doing their job. And, and Desi Seals is a winner. I've said this over and over. He, two state championships, uh, undefeated as a junior in high school, an elite eight in Arkansas. This dude knows how to win. And, and I thought tonight he made a ton of winning plays. And then you guys struggled with turnovers early, but how encouraging is it to kind of see – those mistakes get cleaned up as the as the game goes on yeah you know what i've seen from our guys is that you know whatever it takes they're, they're willing to make the adjustment to because they care about winning um what i like is that you know it means that we have a high ceiling because i mean we, we turn the ball over a lot we take some tough shots we don't run stuff yet you know we haven't had all we haven't been clicking on all cylinders yet so, and, and I don't expect to, but it means that we've got a room for improvement. And that's a very good thing for a team like this. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Hey, th happy Thanksgiving to you too, Tim. 
Uh, next catch question to Kellis. Hey, Jerome, congrats. I'm happy for you guys. Thanks. You were able to win out Thanks, there. Kellis. Uh, can you tell me about just in general what your philosophy is on playing guys in the first half when they have two fouls? I know you kind of took the risk there with Keontae today. Is that something you do all the time? Well, you know, um, what's crazy is I think someone did a stat on it uh, for the last uh, is five to seven years that when a coach takes a kid out of the game with two fouls, he, he fouls them out in the first time. The, the, like the percentage was like 5% of kids actually foul out in the second half, right? And so, you know, I mean, like Keontae was able to play the rest of the game with out fouling out. And so I just don't like fouling guys out. I don't want to be the one that fouls my own guy out with two fouls. And then, you know, he doesn't play for 12 minutes in the first half. Now he can only end up playing, you know, 28 or, or 25 minutes. So, and, and it's a trust thing. Like, I got to be able to trust him that he's not going to do something dumb. Now, if Keontae was a freshman, and I, I probably wouldn't have played him with two fouls, but he's got a lot of water under the bridge. And so, you know, I, I, and I think he's going to uh, be able to make smarter decisions going forward. Okay, makes sense. And uh, just in general, what does it mean to you to be bringing a trophy back home with you to Manhattan? Oh, it's, it's really cool for our, our players you know, to, to see their hard work pay off. It's cool for our fans. You know, um, this is a group of guys you can really rally behind and cheer for because they fight so hard for the name on the front. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really just very, very thankful uh, that God gave me this opportunity to be a part of this, such a wonderful university and program and to love it so All right, hey, congrats again, travel safe. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Kelsey. Uh, next question to D. Scott. Yeah, hey, Coach, congratulations. Thank you, D. Scott. What did you learn most about this team over the last three days? Um, that we've got a, a toughness and a resilience about us. Um, we we have spurtability, right? Like we can we can like turn things really quick, and um, you know, that they really love each other. And, um, and they, they, they really value our staff because I, I see a lot of little things. I hear them say things that, that we say, you know, that they, that we're all starting to speak, you know, common language. And so that, that's been really cool. I was wondering if you could also take me back to uh, the scores table at the very end, the coaches met with the officials What's going through your mind at that point? And then when you realized K-State won the game, what was your instant reaction? Um, I kind of overheard something when, the, on the, when they were doing the stopwatch and I heard uh, Doug Show say uh, 5.6 seconds. And so I knew there was only 4.7 on the clock. So it was too much time. And then one of the guys for LSU was video guy. You could tell like he was disappointed because he saw the replay and, and uh, realized it. So I kind of had an idea. Um, you just never know if the refs don't say, you know, they didn't start it, but hey, let's just go to overtime, let y'all settle it. You just never know. But um, we had written on the board before the game even started. One of the things I put in the locker room was 40 plus minutes. Like we're, if we have to play 45, if we have to play 50, if we have to play 60, we're going home with the championship. And uh, so our guys were prepared to play more games. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Thank you, D. Scott. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Uh, go ahead, Arnie. Congratulations, Jerome. Um, was wondering about the rebounding. I think it was uh, both teams had 15 in each half, but the big thing that stood out seemed to be the offensive boards. They only had two, I believe, in the second half. What did you guys do to, to limit them to one shot there? Well, thank you, Arnie. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And, you know, I, I think we just, like, made a conscious effort to put a body on a body. And the other thing is that um, during the first half, we were going over the block shots and leaving them, uh, like, leaving a guard on a big on the backside. 
And in the second half, we said, we're not going to go block the shot. We're going to stay connected, double team uh, the big fellow Williams, and, and go get the rebound. Cam Carter was huge. I mean, he was, he led us in, in rebound, seven defensive rebounds. Uh, he was just huge. And I just thought our, our guys, you know, had a conscious effort that was going to put a body on the body. Thanks. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for Coach? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Coach. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We'll see you in the build, baby. Let's go. Thank you.